I wish people knew that a lot of children have got poor phonemic awareness and it needs to be taught explicitly. So if you say to a child, we're going to look at the sound, ch, that's not a sound, that's a one of the representations of the sound, ch, but actually that's a grapheme, that's a sound pic, that's a picture of the sound, that represents the sound, ch, in the words that you're going to look at today. So to start off with, when you say we're going to be thinking about a new sound, a new speech sound, we're thinking about a new phoneme. And the new phoneme, because if a, a dog says woof, a cat says meow, a child can hear that. But with phonemic awareness, it's hearing speech sounds, which is something that the children can't hear in words. So if you say we're going to listen for ch, or we're going to look at the word, uh, we're going to think about the sound ch, then you need to check actually that the children can hear it. So in you, if you say church, can they hear that there are two times in that word that you say the word and where it is? Ch, uh, ch. They hear it on sound line one. If you're using sound lines, if you're using boxes, it's box one or three and three. But when we're talking about uh, introducing children to representations of phonemes, make sure the children can hear those sounds. But the important thing here is that this, again, is just one of the representations of the speech sound ch. Because if you're going to say to a child, this says ch, they're going to really struggle reading words where it doesn't. So what we're saying is, in the words we're going to look at today, this grapheme is a representation of the speech sound ch in just the words we're going to look at today. It might or might not always represent the speech sound ch. So if you're going to explain to the children that today we're going to listen to the sound, the phoneme, the speech sound ch, and we're going to use this representation, this picture of the sound, that's why we call them sound pics. This is the picture of the sound ch that we're listening for today. This is the only picture of ch that we're going to look at today. That's if your lesson only has that representation for the ch. But what I would prefer that you did to set children up so that they can actually start to think about things themselves is think about the sound we're going to think about today is ch. The high frequency representation, the high frequency sound pick that we're going to look at for that looks like this. It's the ch. So if you look at the spelling clouds on your cloud wall, you'll see on the outside, that's our high frequency representation for the ch sound. But look at the others. So to lead into that, we're saying to the children, this is the high frequency one. This is the one that we're actually covering. If you're um, teaching phonics systematically, this is our order. So in the, gr on the yellow code level, this is the representation we're looking at. For example, in the word cheese. But, boys and girls, the ch sound we want to listen to all the time so that even though that's what we're doing today, we are going to be listening to words that don't have this one in. So one activity might be that we're going to, as well as looking at those words with this one, the, act the activity as part of your phonics lesson might be, well, I'm going to show you some pictures of lots of things where when I say the word, I can hear the ch. So it might be chocolate it might be picture it might be um what else could we have we could have um a uh, ditch we could have i'm just looking at my sound walls we could have cello look at those they're on the sound wall that's why you you know we have a sound wall so that teachers don't have to think of it all on the top of their head so you might say so you might have pictures of a ditch a question mark cheese future and cello a cello so when you're talking asking the children to duck hand line to numbers those words like cello ch -er -o -o cello ch -er -o -o cello ch -er -o -o cello they're thinking of that ch sound at the beginning there they've got their mini monsters so they can put them on there ch because they just represent the sounds, don't they? So you could have those five words. Five words, just checking. Yeah, five words. Ch, e, o, o. So you can have those five words. And to start off with, the children just think about the sounds that go there. Now, in this word, 
that ch is represented by the grapheme, by the sound pick C. That sound, ch e -o -o. cello. Okay, so you can show them, but that's not the part that matters. That's not the part that matters for the lesson today. If your focus is on teaching this as the as a representation for ch that's not your ch your focus. So you might just leave it there and have the children map out don't cancel lines and numbers and use the monsters, the mini monsters, to show the sounds. To show here, the ch is on the line one. So you might show them all of those words like picture. Let's do another one. P ik ch a picture. P ik ch a picture. P ik ch a picture. Where is the ch going to sit here? P ik ch. It's going to sit there, isn't it? And the schwa is going to go there. So use the sound clouds because this is what the children are looking at all the time whilst they're writing. Yes, that is one of the representations. It's a high frequency representation for that speech sound, but there are others. So today in our lesson, we're going to look at that one. We're going to look at lots of words with that one, but I need you to hear that sound in words and understand that when you're exploring the phoneme to grapheme representations, the speech sound to stamp pick representations, that there are going to be five of them. Perhaps you find some more. These sound walls, are these spelling clouds, are as a result of over 10 years of working with children and investigating the code. If you found more, let me know. It has to be more than one word to go in the cloud, but that's what this is all about. It's exploring. So start the session, every session, by talking about listening for the sounds. You might focus on that grapheme as one representation that we're going to look at, but make sure you don't lead children to the false belief that this is the representation for ch because you're going to cause, cause yourself all sorts of problems and you're going to confuse a lot of children and you're going to fail at least 35% 30 of your class. Greatest respect in the world, print to speech phonics programs, most of the phonics programs around are failing an awful lot of children. So the teachers can change that if they're taught more at universities. They'll be taught to look at programs and understand why that program might be limiting the children.